Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rye Free Reading Room Mother um, Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I have a nice program for everybody, so I hope the caregivers will stick around and, and uh, uh, make the program a lot more interesting and also much more worthwhile for your child's education. So here we go. Are you ready? Everyone sing. Round me out. I don't want to hear my voice. I want to hear your voice. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. I see some snow on the ground over here. Probably upstate there's so snow, way up in the north. But down on the South Pole, there's, no, there's snow too. And who lives in the south? Way, way, way down south, where it's cold too. But a penguin. Penguin's a bird, a bird that has wings, but he can't fly. Oh, but he can swim. Oh, absolutely. And these are wonderful little paddles that he uses to swim. And this is Peter. So pretend you're a, a penguin waddling along. Peter, Peter, penguin marching by, toes turned out and his head held high, long black coat and a sleek white vest. Peter, Peter, penguin, you're the best. Oh, you are, you really are. So here we go, come on, pretend you're a penguin. Boom, 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 boom. Peter, Peter, penguin marching by, toes turned out and his head held high. Long black coat and a sleek white vest. Peter, Peter, penguin, you're the best. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, it's not snowing yet here. We might get snow later, though. But let's see what happens. We can still take our wagon out, right? Maybe someone will pull it for us and we can sit in it. Okay, come on, get in the wagon. Ah. We're bumping up and down in our little red wagon, bumping up and down in our little red wagon, bumping up and down in the little red wagon. Won't you be my darling? Uh-oh, the wheel came off and the axle's broken. The wheel came off and the axle's broken. The wheel came off and the axle's broken. Won't you be my darling? Freddie's gonna fix it with his hammer. Freddie's going to fix it with his hammer. Freddie's going to fix it with his hammer. Won't you be my darling? Come on, everybody. Let's get back in. We're bumping up and down in a little red wagon. Bumping up and down in a little red wagon. Bumping up and down in a little red wagon. Won't you be my darling? Oh, the wheel came off again. Oh, my goodness me. And the axle's broken. The wheel came off and the axle's broken. The wheel came off and the axle's broken. The wheel came off and the axle's broken. Won't you be my darling? Laura's gonna fix it with her pliers. Laura's gonna fix it with her pliers. Laura's gonna fix it with her pliers. Won't you be my darling? It's all fixed. We're bumping up and down in the little red wagon. Bumping up and down in our little red wagon. Bumping up and down in our little red wagon. Won't you be my darling? Wow, that was pretty good. Wizzy Wizard, do you have do you have a little message for our caregivers? I sure do. In mathematics. This is when your children learn mathematics. They start very, very, very young. And it's learned through vocabulary and association. So children need language or vocabulary to think about mathematics. Children need to know words for numbers in the language of geometry, which are shapes, right? Very important. <clears throat> uh, and for quantity, more or less, uh, et cetera, that sort of thing. And the more mathematical knowledge they have, the easier it's gonna be when they go through school learning uh, um, uh, the math. So <clears throat> you'll see oh, some of the um, um, rhymes that we do here are most generally um, geared to build vocabulary skills and concepts of mathematics. We learn that through reading to your children, especially 
um, um, books, uh, not especially, but including books that are informational books, nonfiction books. So here we go. I have a, I have a mouse here and I gave him a cookie. What do you think he'll want? Do you think he'll be happy with that cookie? I think he will. If you give a mouse a cookie, ah, look at that. Am I Laura Numeroff? <coughs> well, if you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a drink of milk. When you give him the milk, nobody's going to want now. He probably will ask for a straw. When he finishes, when he's finished, he'll ask for a napkin. What's he going to do with a napkin? He's going to what? Clean his mouth? Right. Then he'll want to look in the mirror to make sure he doesn't have milk on his mustache. When he looks in the mirror, he might notice his hair needs a trim. So he'll probably ask for a pair of nail, nail shears or nail, 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 nail scissors. When he's finished giving himself a trim, he'll want a broom to sweep up. He'll start sweeping. Oh my goodness me, look at him sweeping all the hair. And he might get carried away and sweep every room of the house. Oh, look what he's doing. Is he messing up that house? I don't know. Oh, he may end up washing the floors as well. Oh my goodness. And when he's done, he'll probably want to take a nap. <laughs> What's he going to ask for next? You'll have to fix him a little box uh, with a blanket and pillow. And he'll crawl in, make himself comfortable, and fluff the pillow a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a story. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the, poor, the poor boy is really having to clean up after this mouse. So you'll read to him from one of your books. And he'll ask to see the pictures. Of course he will. And when he looks at the pictures, he'll get so excited, he'll want to draw uh, one of his own. And he'll ask for paper and crayons. Look at that. Another mess he's made. Oh. And there he draws a picture. And a pretty nice one too. Mm -hmm. And when the picture is finished, <clears throat> he'll want to sign it, sign his name. <clears throat> and he'll ask you for a pen. Oh my goodness, this mouse is really a pest. <clears throat> and he'll want to hang his picture on your refrigerator, which means he'll need. <clears throat> Scotch tape. Oh my goodness, where's the scotch tape? Oh, it's way up in the cupboard. Oh dear, dear, dear. Oh dear. Uh, he'll hang up his drawing and stand back to look at it. And looking at the refrigerator will remind him that he's thirsty. So, ah. Uh, He'll ask for a glass of milk. And chances are, he'll ask for what? A cookie to go with it. <laughs> well, he had fun, but boy, oh boy, what a mess he made, huh? What a mess he made. <coughs> well, speaking of cookies. How about making some cookies? How about some gingerbread men? We made some last week, remember? Let's make them again. How many did I have? Who remembers? Huh? 
Let's count them. Should we sing the song? One little, two little, three little cookies, four little, five little, six little cookies, seven little, eight little, nine little cookies, 10 little cookies waiting to be eaten. Yum, yum, yum. Here come the grandkids. 10 little, nine little, eight little cookies, seven little, six little, five little cookies, four little, three little, two little cookies, one little cookie left on the plate. I don't know, the neighbors might be over. Do you think I better make some more? You gonna help me? Come on, let's count with me. One little, two little, three little cookies, four little, five little, six little cookies, seven little, eight little, nine little cookies, 10 little cookies waiting to be eaten. Here they go. 10 little, nine little, eight little cookies, seven little, six little, five little cookies, four little, three little, two little cookies, one little cookie left on the plate. Maybe that's for Granny Jean, do you think? I think so. <coughs> well, let's see what we have here. <coughs> I have a clock. This one's a grandfather clock. It stands up on the floor. It's not on a table, it's on the floor. And in the middle of the night, who should be coming around to play on it? A little mouse, right? Not the cookie mouse, it's a different one. So here we go, pretend you have a little mouse. We'll go hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, bong, and down he did run. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck two. Bong, bong. And the mouse said, Boo. Boo, boo, boo. Where are you? Boo. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck three. Bong, bong, bong. And the mouse said, Wee. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock, the clock struck four. Bong, 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 bong. And the mouse said, no more. Hickory dickory dock. Let's see. Let's see what we have now. Well, <clears throat> we have little Jack Horner. And he smells something cooking in the kitchen. Someone's baking. Oh, look at what mommy's making a holiday pie. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating the holiday pie all by himself. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? No, we share the pie. And you use your fork or your spoon. Yeah. So here we go. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his holiday pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? No, you've got to learn better manners than that. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> I have a fun book today. We're going to pretend that two colors are little children. Little Blue and Little Yellow by Leo Leone. Little Blue and Little Yellow, two good friends. Look at all those little blues and little yellows. Hmm? You see the blue? And you see the yellow? And what about in between? What color is that? That's different, huh? That's green. Granny Green Jean is wearing green, right? This is Little Blue. Hi, Little Blue. Here he is at home with Papa and Mama Blue. Little Blue has many friends. Look at that. <clears throat> but his best friend is Little Yellow, who lives across the street. And there is Little Yellow's house with his mama and papa. 
how they love to play hide and seek and ring around the rosy. In school, they all sit in neat rows. After school, they run and jump. One day, Mama Blue went shopping. You stay home, she said to Little Blue. But Little Blue went out to look for Little Yellow. Oh, alas, the house across the street was empty. He looked here. He looked there. And everywhere until suddenly around the corner. <laughs> there was little yellow. Happily, they hugged each other. Something happened. And hugged each other. What's happening? Until they were green. Then they went to play in the park. They ran through a tunnel. Is that the tunnel? And they chased little orange. They climbed a mountain. Here they go. They went up the mountain. Yes, they are. When they were tired, they went home. <coughs> but Papa and Mama Blue said, you are not our little blue. You are green. And Mama and Papa Yellow said, you are not our little yellow. You are green. Little Blue and Little Yellow were very sad. They cried big blue and yellow tears. They cried and cried until they were all tears. When they finally pulled themselves together, they said, will they believe us now? Mama Blue and Papa Blue were very happy to see their little blue. They hugged and kissed him, and they hugged little yellow too, but look, they became green. Oh, aha, now they knew what happened. So they went across the street to bring the good news. Look at that. They all hugged each other with joy and the children played until supper time. <laughs> Isn't that a, a different story? That sure is. <clears throat> well, I have something blue here, but it's not yellow, it's orange. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Oh, Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Yeah, very good. Can we sing that again? Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Oh, Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. 
It's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zippity doo da, zippity doo. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. We have a lot to be happy for. <clears throat> well, wah, 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 wah. the ducks are still out. They're still out in my backyard. <clears throat> this is a mallard. I'm a yellow-billed duck with a black feathered back. And I waddle, 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 and I quack, quack, quack. I dabble for my dinner with a swish, swish, swish. And I gobble, 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 all I wish, wish, wish. And that's a poem by Jack Krolutsky. So here we go. I'm a yellow-billed duck with a black feathered back. And I waddle, 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 and I quack, quack, quack. I dabble for my dinner with a swish, swish, swish. And I gobble, 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 all I wish, wish, wish. Have you seen ducks like that? Upside down in the water? And that's what they're doing. So we we'll see their little tail and feet sticking up. That's what they're doing. They're collecting their supper. <coughs> well, maybe a little late for fairs, but <coughs> simple Simon. Simple Simon didn't go to school. And so he didn't really understand too much about money and what have you. Simple Simon. Here I am. Oh, Simon. I'm a baker, right? Baker? Yes. I bake, bake cookies and all sorts of things, right? Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, mmm, yum, 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 yum. Let me taste your wares. Said the pieman to Simple Simon, show me first your penny. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, indeed I haven't any. Well, I, I'm sorry, I can't sell you anything. Here we go. Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, mm, yum, 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 yum. Let me taste your wares. Said the pieman to Simple Simon, show me first your penny. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, indeed I haven't any. Okay, well, let's see. I have a little broken piece of a cookie here. You can have that. What does the Simon say? Thank you. What does the Pyman say? You're welcome. Well, I have for my last story, a poem. It's a poem, a very famous poem by Robert Frost with beautiful pictures by Susan Jeffers. <clears throat> Stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. <coughs> Look, it looks like someone is getting ready had to hitch up their horse to their sleigh. See the sleigh? It doesn't have wheels. It has runners like our sleds, right? So maybe he's a farmer. He lives out in the country. See, he has all those animals. You couldn't keep them in a city, right? No. Stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. And look, here he comes with his, with his, um, <clears throat> his horse and his sleigh, and who's in the woods but some fox, hmm? a little family of fox. Here he's going by a lake. It's starting to freeze over, right? Yeah. Looks like he has lots of blankets to keep him warm. Does he? Yes, he does. <coughs> Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. There he is, but who else is in the wood? Oh, I see an owl. There's another little animal there. <clears throat> and what does he do? He gets out of the sleigh and all the animals 
fly away or run away. And he threw himself on the ground. I wonder why he did that. Oh, I know. My little horse must think it's queer to stop without a farmhouse near. And what did he do? Huh? He made himself a little angel. And no one could watch the old man make an angel. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. You know, what's he taking out of the sleigh, I wonder? Ah, food for the animals in the forest and the woods. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds, the sweep of easy wind. And downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. Well, he's feeding all the wooded animals there. But I have promises to keep. Oh, look, he maybe has grandchildren somewhere. He stop by to say hello. And miles to go before I sleep. And there are all the birds and animals saying goodbye. Thank you for their their, their dinner and miles to go before I sleep. <laughs> and tonight will be one of the longest evenings of the year. Darkest, right? Well, <clears throat> that little horse had harness bells. Harness bells are attached to the sleigh, right? <clears throat> and when people used to go for a ride, <coughs> go visiting, they would have to use the sleigh because there were no cars, there were no big trucks, no, nothing. They, roads weren't plowed nicely like they are now. So they all had to have a sleigh and a horse or an ox or a donkey to, to get around in. So here we go, they made a song. And as the horse jogged along, the bells would ring and it was so pretty. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go. Laughing all the way, ho, ho, ho. bells on Bob Kelvin, making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing the same song tonight. Oh, come on, help me. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Well, I think it's time for our bye bye song. So here we go. So bye bye to little Cookie Mouse. And bye bye to my little duck, too. And bye bye to the horse and the jingle bells. It's time to say goodbye. And goodbye to little bluebird. Yeah, you, you have to go south where it's warm. You don't belong here at no. all. And bye-bye, Granny Jean. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>